In this set of videos, we take a look at a series of topics relating to the Unit 3 programming project. These videos have been designed to be dual purpose. Students will benefit by gaining an understanding of how best to approach their project and how the MART scheme will be applied against their write-up. And teachers looking to gain some more confidence in this unit will also get information on how to guide their students and mark the project. In this video, we look at some of the admin issues around the project, such as what to submit, what forms, which format and when. As such, this video is only really useful to teachers and not students. The process for submitting your candidate's work, forms and marks is slightly different depending on if you choose the postal moderation entry option or the submit for assessment upload moderation entry option at the start of the year when you register your candidates. However, what you must submit is essentially the same. If you're unsure, then check with your exams officer. There are three entry codes you can use for students. The first one, H446A, means you upload electronic copies of the work included in the samples using OCR's Submit for Assessment service and your moderator accesses the work from there. Entry option B means you post the sample of work to your moderator. And with entry option C, you should only use this if you're selecting learners who are retaking the qualification, but they want to carry forward their mark for the non-exam assessment. The four things you must do as a teacher is submit candidates' marks, complete the non-exam assessment cover sheet for each candidate and post the moderator, complete a central authentication form, and get students to each complete their own candidate authentication form. So when submitting marks, these should all be submitted either online via the OCR interchange, or you can use EDI files sent via A to C. Your exams officer again will be able to help you with this. Now this replaces the very old at this point hard copy MS1 forms and actually these are no longer accepted by the way. Note that moderation of your candidate's work cannot begin until the marks have been received. You should make sure to keep a copy of the marks you send off for your own records. For each candidate, you should complete a separate non-exam assessment cover sheet. Make sure you've filled out all the details at the top of the form accurately and that the marks match those submitted. Copies of all of these should be posted to your moderator if you're using postal moderation or uploaded if you're using the submit for assessment service. You should complete one copy of the centre authentication form. This should be signed by each assessor in your centre who is responsible for marking candidates' work. This should be retained in the centre for inspection by OCR if required. You're not required to send this form off. And finally, each candidate should complete their own copy of the candidate authentication statement. Again, these should be retained in the centre for inspection if required. You're not required to send these off. If you're using postal moderation and you need to submit additional evidence to your moderator in the post, other than the write-up itself, such as a video evidence, then it's best to place this on a USB pen. Make sure it's clear what this evidence is, and also make sure you use file formats which the moderator can open with standard software. So we've got on the screen here the entire process from marking to moderation, just so it's easy to see. You start by marking the work using the appropriate form. You get students to sign their own copy of the candidate authentication form and retain in centre. The teachers sign the centre authentication form and retain in centre. If you've had more than one teacher marking a particular cohort's work, this is the point where you now carry your own internal standardisation. You inform students their marks. You then submit the marks to OCR. You then wait for your moderation sample and send off the required work for moderation. Now there's no need to submit the compiled executable code or the original source code files. Moderators will not be running executable files on their PCs anyway, and it's unlikely they would have the software installed which was used to produce the candidate's program. 
If you are using the Submit for Assessment service to upload candidates' work, then you must make sure to follow the additional instructions regarding file formats and naming conventions for the files. Full guidance for this can be found on OCR's website. In short though, you must make sure individual files are less than a certain size and are in an acceptable file format. And we've got a summary table shown here. The best advice is to convert all write-ups into a PDF format before uploading and to try and keep the write-up contained in a single continuous file. However, the moderator will accept files in a wide variety of common file formats. Are you looking for more help or guidance with the project, either as a student not sure what to do or even as a teacher if you're delivering the project for the first time? Well, with a Craig and Dave Premium Membership, you'll get access to all the following resources. We provide you with three exemplar projects, two graded at an A and one at an A star. These are projects that we've submitted by our candidates before and got permission to release. These have been moderated and approved by an exam board and the marks have not been adjusted, so you can be sure these are of high quality and match the mark scheme. Along with these projects, we provide you the marking grid we used, highlighting how we applied the marking and the criteria against each of the example of projects. We also provide you with additional commentary stating to the examiner how we applied the mark and how we found the evidence in the projects and applied it against the mark scheme. We also have a detailed project guidebook which steps through each section of the project from initial ideas to analysis, design, development, coding and evaluation. This book is aimed at the students making sure that they can achieve the top mark band and an A star from their project. Examiner tips are provided throughout and examples of best practice. It's a complete guide on how to document and write their projects. This guide is available on Amazon as a separate purchase, but with a Craig and Dave membership, a PDF copy is provided for free to the school. We also have a second version of this book designed at students who wish to do projects that aren't related to games development. And again, this is included at no extra cost. Just so you can be secure that the quality of information you're getting is high, here's some of our past moderator feedback. The marks were considered in line with the national standard, full credit to the Centre of Professional Performance with the first attempt at a new specification. And the Centre have appreciated the requirements and are able to apply them realistically. Dave and I have been submitting multiple projects every single year for students of different abilities since the first year of the specification, and our marks have not once been adjusted by the exam board.